Today on the channel, we continue our deep dive into Jack's Class Superstar Series 5 with Brutus the Barber Beefcake, Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff, and Terry Funk. The Welcome everyone, Kyle here, and welcome back to the channel for another Jack's Classic Superstar unboxing and review. And today, Series 5 rolls on with Mr. Wonderful, Brutus the Barber Beefcake, and Terry Funk. But remember, for all your wrestling figure needs to hit up Ringside Collectibles, use discount code KYLE to save 10%. And of course, Jack's Classic Superstars were sold back in the day at Ringside Collectibles, and I picked up a lot of them, especially the exclusives way back in the day there and of course we're going to do this review like we do all the other reviews on the channel we're going to take a look at the packaging we're going to talk about it we're going to unbox it we're going to talk about it and we're going to see where it goes from there and of course jack's class superstars a tuesday tradition on the channel so make sure you subscribe hit the old notification bell as every single tuesday we're going to have something jack's class superstars related and right now we're unboxing a lot of figures and of course you patreon members cheap plug for the patreon uh, link in the description below I'm getting way ahead on these classics. You'll be able to get months early access to the videos for the classic sets on the Patreon channel. So hit that up if you are so inclined. So without further ado, let's take a look at some of these. And Terry Funk is one I'm not going to have to unbox. These two I'm going to unbox, but I already have a loose version of this. Uh, so we'll show that here in a second. But let's take a look at old Terry in the package. Now, to me, his most iconic outfit ever is the kind of barber striped pants. No uh, offense, Brutus, over there. Uh, but kind of the candy cane striped pants. Those are my favorite Terry Funk uh, pants, of course. Now, Terry Funk stole my heart in 1989 against Ric Flair in the I Quit match. That's when my love for Terry began. But, of course, the ECW stuff is really where he stole my heart and never let go, like a young Rio. Uh, and this always, to me, represents more of an ECW Terry Funk. I guess you could even say late WCW Terry Funk a little bit. Uh, but just an absolute fabulous figure, a figure that still holds up, and I'm going to say it right now, this figure I find to be better than the Mattel Elite version uh, that we got many, many years later. Uh, hopefully more Terry Funk figures from Mattel soon, maybe a run back of that one, the ECW era. Maybe give it the black and yellow trunks instead, give us new head sculpt, things like that. We do have a Chainsaw Charlie coming to us very soon. We also have an Ultimate Edition Terry Funk. So the future's pretty bright for Terry Funk figures. The more the merrier, if you ask me. As you guys know, he is my favorite wrestler. Him and Ultimate Warrior are my two favorites. Uh, but Terry looking perfect in the package here. Absolutely love him. On the side, Terry Funk, of course. Terry on the other side there. One of the great travesties in the Jax Class Superstars line is we never got a Dory Funk Jr. Uh, or even a Dory Funk Sr. I would have loved to seen a Walmart 3-pack with uh, the two other Funk brothers, much like the family of the Rock family pack. Give us a Funk family pack. I would have absolutely loved that. Dory Funk needs a figure in this kind of style or Mattel, Jazzwear, or something. I hope before it's all said and done, we can finally get a modern-day Dory Funk Jr. figure. Uh, on the back, we got the cross sell, of course. Uh, Nikolai, King Kong Bundy, and Iron Sheik. We did a video on those. Check that one out if you possibly missed it. Uh, we do have a blurb. We do got the glamour shot, UPCs, warnings, all that fun stuff. On the back, Terry Funk. He debuted in 1965. 247 pounds, six foot one. Finishing move, the good old pile driver. Titles: WWE Tag Team Champion, WCW Heavyweight Champion, WCW Hardcore Champion, ECW Heavyweight Champion. So. Uh, Terry, of uh, tons and tons of regional titles throughout, as well as we all know. Very, very cool. On the back of the package, uh, it looks very similar. We do have a fisted hand that he did not come with, after all. Uh, knee pads we got on the figure, but we did not get on the promo shot on the back. So a few little changes here and there. The most notable change is on the side of the package, you can see the little kind of silver sparkles, rivets, whatever you want to call them, in his headband. We did not get that in the final version. We just got a plain red headband. So is what it is there. Put that off to the side. Don't want to accidentally unbox him. As we got Terry Funk right here over to the side. Of course, the accessory comes with a barbed wire baseball bat. Very, very cool. I love that the silver accents were added to the barbed wires. We've seen these bats with no paint to it, and they just look so plain Jane and weird. This looks absolutely perfect as far as a barbed wire baseball bat goes, and it harkens back to his big Japan times, his time over in Japan, the old death matches, things like that. So I'm here for that all day long as an accessory. The other accessory is the red headband. Like I talked about, miss missing the silver accents, uh, but still a headband, and it really is needed for Terry Funk. It goes with him very well. Uh, Terry just absolutely phenomenal. And let's break this figure down right here. 
And this Terry is awesome because the head scan all day long. I know this is Terry Funk. Somebody hand me this head. Yep, that's Terry Funk. Beautiful long hair. Uh, good version of Terry Funk. I'd say 90s version. Somewhere early ECW, even though his hair thinned out a little bit by then, I think, you know, you got to make it a superhero-like figure. you got to give him a little bit more hair maybe than he actually had at the time. But still looks absolutely fabulous there. Good body mold for Terry Funk. Once again, probably a step up of his natural body type, but I'm okay with that in action figures. I'm good with that. Articulation-wise, let's walk through the articulation. They're all three are going to have the same articulation, so we'll only do it one time. Shoulders go all the way around, of course, side to side. Not tons and tons of shoulder movement. Bicep cut, single jointed elbow, uh, wrist side to side, and then back and forth. So pretty good hand movement for back in the day. We do get the painted on hands here for the old tape. Uh, waist articulation, head articulation is uh, pretty good. A little bit limited by the hair, but better than a lot of the long-haired wrestlers we get. Uh, waist, I said, of course, you get the legs a little bit, a little bit back and forth. Not a ton of ton articulation there. And then you get the single-jointed knees right here and then front and back on the ankles. And that's it. That's all we needed back in the day. Uh, down here at the bottom, though, is the really cool, the candy stripe uh, Terry Funk tights. Very, very iconic. He did wear trunks for a lot of his career, of course. Uh, but I would say most people remember Terry looking like this, which is kind of crazy. The long story career he had going all the way back 1965. A lot of people remember this, and maybe that's just ages of people as time goes on, things like this. Uh, that's just the way that goes. And then you have black boots with him. And that's it. That's the end of the Terry Funk figure. But man, an all-time favorite. You guys know we did our top 10 list on these jacks. And you guys know how much I love this figure. Still holds a special place in my heart all these years later. There is a repainted one in the black and yellow uh, tights. Tights. Yeah, there you go. Uh, that was a Walmart exclusive back in the day. So there it is. All right. Now let's take a look at Brutus the Barber beefcake a controversial one i've said it before on the channel when i was a kid we all loved brutus beefcake now all these years later it seems like everybody hated him i don't understand what happened uh never the greatest thing but i always thought he was going to have an intercontinental title run just never happened uh, unfortunately for his career but a good one got some soft goods with this one got his uh, shears as well got to have those for brother bruti uh but looking good in the package there Brutus the Barber Beefcake on the side, and the other side there's a glamour shot. Look at him looking all fancy with his bow tie on. Oh, good for you, Brutus. On the back, there he is, looking all good. Same glamour shot at the top. We got the blurb, got the cross sell, got the UPCs, got the warnings. Let's see what it says about our old buddy Brutus the Barber Beefcake. Uh, let's see, debuted 1983, 273 pounds, height six foot four. Was he really six four? I always figured him about six two or so, but. That's only two inches. Who knows? Finishing move, of course, the sleeper. He'd put them out and then he'd cut their hair. That's what would happen. Titles, WWE Tag Team Champion, of course, with Greg the Hammer Valentine. So there you go. Without further ado, let's get him out of the package. Let's go. Let's get old Brutus out, see what happens. Let's go in through the bottom. Oh, I'm going to punch myself in the face. That's all we need. See you later. Goodbye. All right. There it is. See you later. Goodbye. And we get the plastic prison. Oh, Brutus the Barber, look at him, the pink and white attack going on here. Very cool. I don't believe I've ever had this figure loose in my life either. And This did get a repaint in a Mega Powers or Mega Maniacs 3-pack with Jimmy Hart. See you later, and Hulk Hogan, of course, so we did get that. Let's look at this accessory first and look at this. Real working uh, scissors here, hedge clippers, whatever you want to call it. Uh, very, very cool, though. I do like this one a whole lot. I believe they're painted differently. Yeah, the back of the package had them barber-striped. Instead, here, it just went straight red. So that is a little bit different on these. Uh, but very cool. And the working ability on these is really, really cool. Very, very nice uh, hedge clippers, I guess. Shears, whatever we want to call them. Very nice accessory here. Then we get down to Brutus the Barber. And he's got his barber shop jacket on uh, you know back in the day when the barbers wore jackets there's not a lot of barber shops around unless you go out in the country and there's still a few here and there of course but nothing like it used to be back in the day uh, but it does have the torn and tattered spots and of course the fishnet throughout nice attention to detail here it's funny you know this goes all the way back to like 2004 or so with these figures and it does feel a little bit dated especially in like the yarn or not yarn, I don't even felt. I don't even know what you call that with the little pink on the sides here. It really looks like I went to uh, Hancock Fabrics and made my own thing a little bit. Uh, but that's just kind of the charm with this as well. But a very, very good looking Brutus Beefcake too. A little bit younger than I think he was at the time of this. I don't know. This just does look a little bit younger in the face than I, I think of the iconic primetime Brutus Barber Beefcake years. But it's still a good one. He's got a mullet you can set your watch to uh, that would make Billy Ray Cyrus cry for sure. 
He does have, not, it is not a soft goods bow tie. It is a plastic bow tie around his neck. Uh, you don't want to remove that thing. You'll never get that back on. You'd have to pop the head off. Uh, then he does have the striped pants tights going on. The pink and black attack like a Young Heart Foundation. But that does look really good as well. White boots, of course, with Brother Bruda here. But very, very good Brutus the Beefcake. Brutus the Barber Beefcake, I should say, figure. Uh, a little bit underrated, a little bit forgotten, I've always felt about this Brutus Beefcake. But I think it's just, all these years later, so many people don't like him. He's like a running joke. I think it's Conrad Thompson's fault. Uh, and somebody told me in my videos the other day that I look like the spitting image of Conrad Thompson. Who'd have thought I looked like Akeem from the One Man Gang? I get something. Every single day, somebody says, uh, it's usually Big Show or AJ Styles, or a combination of both. Has anybody ever told you this? Yeah, every comment of every video, but uh, it's kind of funny. I like to play along, as you guys probably have seen some of the comments. It's fun to play along, you know? Uh, but somebody did tell me I look like Conrad Thompson the other day. I said, huh, well, that's a new one. Add him to the list. Hacksaw Jim Duggan, the Cowardly Lion from uh, The Wizard of Oz. Uh, I've got a few interesting ones over the year. A uh, year, two years, whatever it's been at this point. But Brutus Beefcake, I'm here for it. I'm okay with it. Kudos to Brutus. He definitely belongs in the classic superstars line, if you ask me. Another guy that belongs in the line, Mr. Wonderful Paul Orendorf. Uh, bad enough to be dangerous. A thorn in the side of Hulk Hogan. Never quite got over the hump, of course, but had a lot of memorable matches with Hulk Hogan back in the day. Of course, WrestleMania won. Uh, some of that going on. And a beautiful, beautiful Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff getting a robe here that would make Ric Flair blush. Uh, very, very cool red and silver robe. Like that a whole lot. On the side, Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff. Now, it spells it Mr. Pound One, uh, number one, then Durful. I, maybe this is just me just not remembering, but I remember it just being wonderful, like with the W, wonderful spelled out. Am I imagining things, or did it go both ways? I just don't remember that spelling of it. I, I don't know. Maybe it's just me. I don't know. I don't know. But there he is, Glamour Shot on the side. On the back of the package, you got the cross sell, UPC's warnings. We got the blurb. We got the Glamour Shot at the top. You can see him without his robe on the back of the package. All white gear, of course. Well, let's take a look. Let's see what it says about old Mr. Wonderful Paul Orendorf. Debuted in 1976, 210 pounds, 6 feet tall. Finishing move, much like Terry Funk, the old pile driver here. Title WCW Tag Team Champion, uh, much like Junkyard Dog in the prior series. Uh, he was also a six-man tag champion, but he was actually a WCW Tag Team Champion, if you remember the team. Pretty wonderful with good old Paul Roma back in the day. Uh, Paul Roma, another guy that never got a fair uh, shake in my eyes. Uh, I, You know, the Young Stallions, they were enough to be dangerous, but we knew they were losing every time. But then he went to Power and Glory, and I love Power and Glory. I thought that was one of the most uh, unheralded tag teams of back in the day. Just a little bit too forgotten. Would have loved to have him in Hasbro back in the day. We are getting Zombie Sailor retros of Paul Roma, so there you go. And I believe we're getting Hercules from him too, if I'm not mistaken. And we'll probably get another version to match the Power and Glory one. The Power and Glory was a great team. Then Paul Romo went to WCW, and I was buying it. A lot of people were not buying it, but I was buying his run in WCW. Maybe it was because I was like 11 years old. I don't know. Uh, but it worked for me. It didn't work for a lot of older generation and a lot of people all these years later, it seems to be. So uh, a little Paul Roma talk here. I think it's the first on the channel. Probably the last time. Until we get zombies, then we'll review it, I'm sure. Let's pull old Mr. Wonderful out. See you later. Off to the side. How about a little plastic prison? Mr. Wonderful looking good. There he is. Pop him out. Maybe. Uh-oh. We're bolted in. We haven't seen a bolt in for a while. It's been a while. Undertaker and George Steele are the two bolted in guys. Uh, we'll pull him out, of course, right there. Off to the side. See you later. Goodbye. And let's get down to business with old Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff. Fabulous, fabulous robe, like I said here. Really does shine. Got sparkles on it. And we're losing sparkles left and right all over my table. Uh, so I don't like that aspect of it. But very, very cool all over my hands and stuff like that. It's like somebody glitter bombed me. They put an envelope full of glitter. I opened it up, spilled it everywhere. That's kind of what it feels like with this. A uh, beautiful, beautiful robe, even if it does have glitter. Got Mr. Wonderful on the back, of course. All day long, I know this is Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff. Looks just like him. Beautiful, beautiful here throughout. Does got a fisted hand, got a gripping hand, got white uh, wrist tape going on, and then you got the nice Velcro even on the lace-up part of the robe, which I really do appreciate things like that. Uh, just extra detail on this robe thrown together here. White knee pads, all white outfit going for Mr. Wonderful. One of the guys that pulled off white, I always thought Mr. Wonderful and Tito Santana back in the day were the two guys that pulled off white better than anybody else. You didn't see a lot of guys in all white gear. 
uh, because it's tough to hide things with all white gear, as we know. But Mr. Wonderful, quite the physique on him back in the day, as we all know. Just an absolute fabulous Mr. Wonderful figure. Absolutely love this one. It's a great figure. We did get another Mr. Wonderful in the Classics line in a three-pack, if you guys remember that one, the Walmart exclusive with Bob Orton and Rowdy Roddy Piper. We'll get to that eventually here on the channel as well. Uh, but you can't do much better than this, Mr. Wonderful. This is probably his iconic figure from the Jax Classic line. Of course, we did get a Mattel Legends line that unfortunately was quite the peg warmer. I don't know if we're going to see any more Mr. Wonderful figures uh, in the near future from uh, Mattel. But you never know. Stranger things have happened, of course. So there it is. There's Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff looking only like he could look. So we got Brutus, we got Mr. Wonderful, we got Terry Funk. What are your guys' thoughts down in the comments on these three? All in, all out, can't wait to get them. Passed on them back in the day, picked them up back in the day. Let me know what you think about these three. Of course, like this video, subscribe to the channel, hit the old notification bell. As you guys know, every Tuesday, Jack's Classic Tuesday here on the channel. Also, Patreon, where you can watch a ton of Jack's Class Superstars content, as I'll be months ahead on the old Patreon on this video series. So if you want to watch these ahead, Join up on the Patreon and you can check these out, including other exclusive content, bonus content, early access to videos, as well as monthly giveaways over there on the Patreon. So definitely check that bad boy out for sure. And uh, without further ado, also remember to follow along on social media at SirPaul64, Twitter, Instagram, the underscore Kyle underscore Peterson, and ProWrestlingTees.com. Uh, there it is. Search Kyle Peterson over there on Pro Wrestling Tees. So for Mr. Wonderful, Brutus the Barber Beefcake, and my boy Terry Funk, I'm Kyle, and I'll see you guys all real soon.